Yeah, good morning, everybody. I am very grateful to you that you all join uh, this video conference of your act today. It is the second which we have. We decided to have that second one because the first one was so successful. Um, I would like to start by saying we have now uh, 21 participants from 15 countries. That is a very good score, I must say. It's very encouraging. The other self-discipline <laughs> is three minutes. You all have no more than three minutes for your contribution. And whatever you want to say, put it in a box of three <coughs> minutes maximum. When we have 21 participants, three minutes, that's already more than an hour of contributions and then we have not yet discussed with, with each other. Having said that, I will come back to you later again and now give the floor to Dana and Dana will monitor that, that part and, and will ask uh, members to contribute. Dana, please. Good morning. I have to update uh, the list because we are now 22 from 16 countries. So uh, I didn't have Rosemary on, uh, on that list that I sent out yesterday evening, but I counted on her. So it was my mistake. So good morning, Rosemary. I'm so pleased that you made it. So, uh, so you morning. know the, good morning. You know uh, what uh, the topic, what we will be talking about. We, we would like to uh, to go back to our previous uh, meeting and to uh, talk about what we could learn from this lesson, from this pandemic, and what are some positive outcome, outcomes uh, from this uh, difficult period. Uh, what could help us uh, in the future being a, an organization who is fighting for the rights of uh, senior citizens. So I will start with, uh, with uh, the alphabetic order. And the very first one is Mira Ferdeni from Albania. Good morning, Mira. Three minutes. Oh, we can hear you. Mira. <laughs> Um, yes, now, yeah, now, yeah, now it is you know, okay. I, I close my. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Thank you, all organizers, for this uh, important meeting. I have two points. The situation of COVID 19 has seen as an important vector of solidarity in community. For us, SAG is very important the local government role, national strategy resources available included in the future legislation, especially addressing elder women abuse and community attention, awareness for the fight against elder abuse. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mira. Oh, you were, you were even quicker than three minutes. Because uh, we are 21 persons. Yeah, yeah, 20. We are, the same. We are 22, actually. <laughs> so, all right. So, very good. Very good. Thank you so much. Rosemary, I would like to give you the floor. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, for your inviting. Is now the three minutes or it's just telling you that I'm here? Do you yeah, hear me? It is okay. You can talk. I can talk. Uh, as you know, I belong to the student union, so I have uh, my thoughts on the young people and I uh, appreciate it very much that the older people don't only think of themselves, but make solutions or at least some positive thinking about the people who are at the moment perhaps 20, what is going to be in life for them. And I'm very grateful for all the young people who escape home so that I'm with 84 years still lively and healthy. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Rosemary from Austria, from Graz. Uh, and the next one on my list is Miss Miloš Weiss from the Czech Republic, from <laughs> Prague. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to see you again in good health and well-being. Uh, last time you stopped me, Dana, uh, before three minutes passed. So I tried to fill, to refill my last contribution, only a few words about the negative uh, elements of the COVID. Uh, please, it is very short time. Uh, the most important, I think, is uh, the, the economic and finance, financial crisis. Uh, it is uh, not only global, but it is uh, not only local, but it is global financial and, and economic crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the Czech Republic, our budget will work at the loss of five 100 billion Czech crowns, and that says all. So that from going from that, uh, we can see that there will be inflation increases of increase of prices and, and so on, worsening of the personal and consequently family economic situation, bankruptcy of small businessmen and so on. And we can see also, and we will see, that the skissers open between poor and rich and very fastly, very rapidly. That uh, what I wanted to say last time, and now I go to the point. That means uh, positive elements. I will fit in the allowed time, Donna, don't be afraid. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to summarize uh, the points. Uh, due to the COVID, good and quality personal traits and features of man and society appeared. It, it consists in the, uh, for example, mutual help and solidarity. We state strengthening family and neighborhood relations, international and local solidarity, developing general knowledge in the field of culture and science. And COVID pushed people to do more. For example, healthy food, running, gymnastics, but also singing, playing, and so on. Uh, COVID has changed the world. Some of our problems became suddenly significant comparing to the global problems. We can monitor that we can also uh, see an increase of the human resilience, strengthening of the local tourism, doing the shopping and of the local products and so on. COVID has opened new communication ways with uh, use of modern technology, say for example, this our Zoom conference. And more, and at, at last, we learned a lesson from COVID. We know that uh, we must be patient with easing the restrictions and rules. We know what to do in case of the new wave of COVID. As for me, I am for more strict sanctions in case of violation of the law, which is for all people, not only for some of us. To sum up, there are tangible negative consequences, but there are many positive consequences. COVID has changed the world. The thinking of people emphasized the value of the human lives and has shown the direction, the way that humanity should take in the future. That I wanted to say. Uh, at least, please, as you may recall, I introduced always myself as a member representative of the Union of Pensioners of the Czech Republic. This union has broken up and now they have uh, other concerns that funding my URAC uh, activities. That's why I missed, for example, last session in Vilnius. Uh, so I am, in fact, at this moment, an individual member uh, without, uh, I hadn't, hasn't paid uh, my membership fee yet, uh, Dana, I will do it uh, as soon as possible. So I stayed a member of uh, Europe. That's all I wanted to say for the moment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So now it is my turn and I would like to, uh, to mention one aspect that appeared during this um, coronavirus um, epidemic, and it was ageism. Ageism when uh, 
the elderly are feeling uh, that uh, the younger generation uh, does consider us uh, like a burden for the society because so many measures were directed to our safety and uh, they couldn't go to do shopping when they wanted and so on. So I wanted to say that um, uh, I consider a very effective um, measures or very effective um, uh, action against ageism if uh, the elderly uh, try to promote more their active role in the society. Because uh, not everyone who is over 65 is dependent. Uh, most of us are independent, active, and still able to make our own decisions. Uh, so we don't feel ourselves as burden for the society. And uh, I would like to bring one concrete example. Uh, I am going with my students to, uh, or I was supposed to be now in Canada and Alaska. We didn't go because of uh, the pandemic, but um, we managed that 27 people out of 33 decided to postpone the trip to accept the voucher and not to insist upon the deposit that they already paid because our government issued a law that they are entitled to get the cash if they want to. Only six of those, you know, could not uh, resist the temptation to get the money immediately. So it is a real uh, tangible example how we can help, we can show the solidarity to help the younger generation to, to secure their jobs and to help to restart the economy, at least the sector that I am talking about, and it is tourism. Thank you for your attention. Uh, so on my list is now Paul Anker from Global Seniors from Denmark. Oh, thank you. Let me... Yes. Okay. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Uh, good, uh, good day, everybody. And I'm very glad to be in this conference. And I think it's a very splendid initiative that you have uh, brought. 22 persons together here today. I'd like to only mention a few things about the coronavirus. It calls very much for solidarity, not even between different groups of ages, but also between diff different countries and situations. We have, for instance, uh, sent an open letter to our Minister of Development and Min uh, Development uh, Corporation and to the Foreign Minister to say that it, you have to, in these circumstances, support old people faced with COVID-19, COVID in, especially in poor and fragile environments. And uh, we are a lot of elderly people, elderly people who is not dependent, as you said, uh, Dana, just before. And uh, we are doing very well under this COVID-19 crisis. But there is a lot of poor people within Denmark or abroad who is doing not so good. And we have to be doing something for, for these people. We have in uh, Denmark, uh, the COVID-19 crisis has shown us that a lot of informal care activities is taking place through Facebook, uh, young people who is uh, offering the assist to older people, uh, also community, uh, uh, civil society uh, 
uh, organization offers different types of services, uh, visiting services, talking to them, uh, for instance, like this on a, a web base, or just call them on the phone, or anything like that. So, uh, so there have been developed a lot of different services. They're not uh, community services from uh, from the uh, local authority, but just uh, initiative taken by the people. And uh, that we support very much. And we have just answered to an open call from the Nordic Council of Ministers to uh, study informal care under the COVID-19 crisis in Finland, Russia and Denmark and compare them and exchange uh, what we learn from it. And we're looking very much forward to that. Thank you, Paul. That was my report. Thank you very much. And so we have the United Kingdom uh, with Elizabeth and we got also Germany with Christian uh, Weinberg. So welcome. Uh, so we, we are... We have a total of 29 participants right oh, now. So uh, even yeah, uh, than the last time. And I can see Vandana from India <laughs> is with us. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, so Peter is not uh, available. So now Moira. Moira, it, yeah, I am giving you the floor from Paris. Thank you very much, everybody. Moira Allen for the Pass It On Network, Global Network. <laughs> and also for Old Up in France. And I'd just like to build on what's been said previously about the status of older people, because the Old Up organization has just run a survey, a nationwide survey in France, and 3,475 older people over the age of 70 participated in this survey. And the, the very strong message that comes out is what you've already said, Donna, and what you've already said, Kaval, and that is that more than 85% of us are valid. There's only a small, unfortunate percentage of people who are not valid, and the rest of us have to stand up. And I think one of the things, one of the positive elements of this COVID thing is that it's got us all angry, um, tired of being treated like children, and one of the many of the costs that came out of the survey is that we are competent adults. We can look after ourselves. We can take this thing seriously, can put, put matters in hand, but we don't need to be treated like children. And I think that's a very positive aspect that needs to be brought out. And then the other thing that it did bring out is that there's been an increase in that population, 70 plus, in the use of digital tools. And that's something I think that can only be a good thing and needs to be developed very, very widely. From our own point of view, we did, um, we did an online event that was uh, supposed to be in person at the United Nations. And I'm only mentioning that because it brought us people from all over the world. We had 200 people and we've now gone on to build on that. And the very proof of, 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 the, of the effectiveness effectiveness of this is what we're doing today. Uh, Françoise Petla and myself, Monique Epstein, are representing eSignors Association in Paris. The subject I want to, to talk to you about is the positive points and the lessons uh, from, for the future that we learned from the COVID crisis experience. After my presentation, I will give the floor to Oscar Zanotto for Isra Italy and Nikolai Kobliakov from Senior Group, Lithuania and Paris. Of uh, Isra. Isra is a public care provider provider based in Italy, near by Venice, uh, in the northeast part of Italy. We have 900 seniors living in four nursing homes one co-housing and 1,000 citizens uh, in home care, almost with dementia. Uh, we are in European network activities in terms of networking and uh, projects, uh, almost regarding uh, active aging and the use of technology in aging and in housing. 
um, getting the point about uh, what changed in, uh, after COVID-19, um, three things. First, prevention. We have seen and we see that prevention is not just, let's say, uh, nice to have, but is a must for our organizations. This year, thanks to our, let's say, good management, uh, we are still COVID-free and we got minus 20% of uh, diet order in our nursing homes because of the prevention, because of the technology and several things. So we need to boost that, these solutions. Second, um, the ICT and remote care, uh, we still to have huge of digital gap. It's true, things are changing, but we need to, let's say, uh, improve the investment on this side and uh, we, we, let's say, to boost the mindset change. Uh, the positive thing is that not, not only Europe, but also the Italian government will put huge of money and regulations uh, for new solution in home care, keeping people safety and so on. Third, um, housing. We need to change our model. We need to move from a mainframe approach where the hundreds of people stay together in new housing solutions. Also because of the new demand, the new trends. Uh, finally, let me say that the media uh, talked about COVID dead people and older people, but now it seems that we are coming back to the previous neglect to this phenomena. So what I want to say, and I hope that this network will do, is to sense, uh, let's say, improve the sensitivity of the media about uh, the older needs, because uh, let's say there was more than half of uh, with the percentage of people death that was over 65 years old. But nowadays, I repeat, uh, nobody talk about this. Almost here in Italy, I don't know in your country. So innovation, housing, media sensitivity is what we are uh, willing to improve. Thanks again to Monique and to all of you to be here. Thank okay. you very much. So, so perhaps Nicola, you want to say a word? You yeah. present yourself? Uh, thank you, Monique. Thank you, organizers of this uh, very important meeting. Uh, I represent actually a French company, but we are active in Eastern Europe, uh, mainly in Baltic states. So we are developing a couple of innovative models, both institutional and home care, but uh, I really want now to attract your attention to a slightly different uh, topic that uh, we are discussing internally with uh, uh, experts of uh, aged care for the last couple of months that uh, European community like uh, a sort of information and infrastructure for all the Europe, unfortunately, according to our opinion, has not paid so far enough attention for the dramatic situation that happened in the nursing homes. You know that uh, uh, in nursing homes in Europe, uh, they leave approximately 3.7 million of age of seniors. And uh, actually it's less than 1% of all the European population. But more than half of all the deaths of COVID happened in uh, nursing homes. So, and we see that uh, uh, the highest level response of European Commission. So uh, there are eight measures. There are measures for public health, for travelers, for fishermen, for agriculture, but no any direct measure that uh, would solve the problem of real high mortality in nursing homes. And uh, we are trying now to attract attention of European commissioners and DG for this problem. So we really think that now that's time for Europe to show that uh, it wants to save the main problem, the main objective. So to save the lives of aged Europeans. Okay, so thank you and uh, keep going. Merci. Thank you thank very you. much. Uh, so now we are coming to Germany. Uh, Germany uh, and we have uh, Dirk and Christian. So Christian, I would go first for, to give the floor to you and then to Dirk. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, we in Hamburg are responsible for about 100 groups of elderly people and four centers where 
elderly people, you know, with other generations meet. All is not, uh, a, not able at the moment, and we are uh, discussing with, the, with our government to open the, the, the centers and to make it possible that the group begin. That we think is a very, very important thing for uh, the elderly people who are healthy, who are uh, active, and uh, who want to engage in our social points of living in Hamburg. So uh, I don't know where, how the others of our uh, meeting think about that. I would like to hear. Uh, so, uh, Dirk, may I give you the floor? Yes, thank you, Dana. Um, I look at the whole development, and we said uh, COVID-19 pandemic creates dramatic situations for affected individuals, but also for society at large. That is true. I mean, it is a very bitter experience for our time being. Uh, we have to recognize that. On the other hand, um, it gives a focus on one part of the population, and that is the older persons in our society. Older persons and their situation has never been discussed as much as today, in a positive way and in a negative way. When it was negative, the, well, they uh, get that and that and are protected and all that, it immediately created counter-reactions and counter-arguments, positive ones. And we see today a, a political debate and a societal debate which has three main questions about aging and older persons. The first question is, who are they? What are we talking about when we talk about older persons? I just saw that Moira said one positive action all can do insist on the differentiation of ages. Over 50 is not a category. Yes, that is true. They are so different, the older persons there, as different as the young ones. So the first question is, who are they? The second question is, where are they? Where do, you, do we find the older persons? In families, in homes, etc., etc., etc. There's not much knowledge about it. We talk about something which is sort of not really defined in political terms, not clearly defined. And the third question is, how are they? What is their condition? How do they live, etc.? All these three questions become public debate. And that is very, very positive. And we, as URAC, have to take advantage of that present situation of a public discussion and interfere. We, we need to contribute to that political discussion. We did it after the first video conference, which we had, by a press release, which everybody received and which was largely distributed. Later in the discussion, I would like to hear, what have you done with it? We need to influence the media so that the picture of older persons, the image comes clearer and uh, more honest and less discriminatory and all that. We have to contribute ourselves to that. Thank you. That was my little message. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Derp. And uh, now we are coming to Hungary. Gabor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Donna. Uh, welcome and good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, second time, I have to report to you that 
my dear president, Eva, <laughs> is just uh, able to send her best regards because she got a, unexpectedly an invitation to a meeting at nine o'clock this morning. And she was not in a situation to say no. So I, I am representing the National Association of Life for Years, uh, Association for Elderly and the Clubs. What I would like to report to you is basically a similar conference we organized at the university, uh, Department of Social Work, with the participation of the association on this topic. Uh, basically, for our purpose, but also uh, thinking of our international work together. It was a two hours or so long conference and uh, I uh, summarized some of the more interesting points for an international audience. This is what I would like to tell you now. Basically, there are three points, what you could say, positive. The first is very similar to what basically Nikolai was talking about, that it is very much clear for us that uh, an epidemic needs an international system. So the European Union as a, as a structure uh, has again a very important role in struggling with, with the next waves of epidemics because uh, we know that there will be maybe second wave of COVID-19, but there are always dangers of new and new uh, problems. So the European level uh, is very, very important. The second, uh, this is a kind of crisis intervention way of thinking that there were problems, negative things, but there must be, uh, there is a, a chance to see them, these negative issues as a positive uh, outcome, what we have to change in the future. And uh, 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 the, the one is that the social and health as two very important system, they, they need uh, more harmonization because as we can see, there are tensions between the two fields of activity in terms of uh, professional knowledge, in terms of professional people, in terms of money, in terms of organization, in terms of regular uh, regulations and so on. I don't know how is it in other countries, but definitely in Hungary it's a problem. The second that the protocols, how to deal with, with people are n not uh, good enough uh, the protocols don't contain really good ideas. What to do with, with people with these epidemics? For example, just to tell you one little, pro little very big problem, which was not in the protocol, there were people, uh, old people in, from a home for the elderly. They were taken to the hospital because they were sick. And these people could go back to the home for the elderly without testing. And definitely uh, she took the virus back to the home for the elderly and 30, 43 people died in that particular home for the elderly, which is a tragedy. Uh, and just because of this small, small uh, 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 protocol problem. Uh, the third is also a very important lesson. Uh, the state and local governments have to put more resources into social and health systems uh, because uh, 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 those systems cannot deal with this kind of epidemics uh, at a higher level. And the third point is, uh, positive point, uh, uh, the professionals reported that actually due to the epidemic, they could meet much more elderly people because of the problems. It means that the community of elderly at local level strengthened a lot. It is due to the problem. The second, that also uh, the communities are much more uh, stronger in, in, in houses uh, where they uh, set up their own uh, 
systems, how to help each other, the neighbors in the house. Uh, uh, they, they went to do shopping. They asked them, how are you? What can I do for you? And so on. Uh, the third, uh, that uh, the problems uh, also strengthened uh, that the social and uh, social sphere uh, uh, is much more important in our societies because there are more uh, elderly people, what Dirk was analyzing very well. We, we need much more information. Who are they? Where are they? What are they need? So uh, it is so important. And last point, uh, that also uh, there must be a stronger dialogue between the government and the social sector uh, to set up uh, maybe uh, uh, more structures uh, to discuss problems, to listen to each other, and uh, to come out in a more positive way from this epidemic. That was a short report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabor. And uh, now we are coming to Italy. Dario Bracco. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I take care of uh, what we heard since now uh, with very attention because Italy is uh, uh, on the top of this problem because we have a lot of uh, uh, cases in all the country and we are so different from south to the north. So we represent a champion, a symbol of, uh, of the problem. And, uh, we discover that we need uh, a lot of uh, uh, places in the housing home, in the nursing home. And the nursing home are not adapted now for uh, accept, for guest, uh, elderly uh, with uh, the poly, poly pathology as they are. Uh, we are a concentration of this kind of people in the nursing home, but the nursing home are not so medicalized to take care of them, to care of them. Uh, what we need is uh, a, 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 a new study, new project, a new solution to, uh, to be able to avoid this, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, I don't know what is, but this terrible uh, number of deaths mm, uh, concentrating the nursing home, but they are concentrating the nursing home because the structure are not able to care them. And so they put them, they, they transfer uh, the, 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 best, the, the guest ill in the hospital and hospital send back in the nursing home, so the, the uh, uh, pandemic uh, uh, enlarges. This is the problem we are discovering through uh, different uh, uh, studies. They are coming from legal to scientific to viral, etc. But the key is that there are, there was, it was a big mistake to transfer uh, patient, patient guests uh, of the nursing home to hospital, but more uh, dangerous was to go back these people in the nursing home when they are not uh, in the good health, in still in good health. It means that they, they had a lot of uh, contamination in the nursing home. Now, the problem is that all nursing homes are at least at, at minimum of two beds uh, for, for, uh, in, in, in each room. It means that two people, uh, no parents, uh, two people extraneous, are obliged to live in the same area. And it means that uh, it's, it's difficult to avoid a new contamination in this way. So, uh, practically, 
we are now combating to uh, a, a situation of uh, of structures and the situation of modes because we are not at the end of this pandemic pandemic eh? we are not this is just uh, a little uh, stop for the summer time but i I further uh, the report uh, we had uh, uh, from the vir virologue uh, and other people. Uh, we wait for another increase in uh, in the autumn, and we are absolutely not prepared to come back then. Even because the people uh, we uh, who work uh, on the first stage of the pandemic uh, pandemic are now in burnout and it's very difficult to uh, ask them to to uh, to make some effort uh, in the future so it, it's necessary that this summer uh, we find uh, some solution to uh, establish where the people can live in a safety way not in the in the nursing home as they are now and the hospital, the hospital reacts very well. We are a lot of uh, intensive care unit now. And this is the, but this is emergency. All the other people, uh, to have an idea, uh, Italy needs uh, at least uh, 15,000 new bed in nursing home. And we don't have, uh, 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 we are not able to guest people. So there are all increase the uh, domiciliary assistance. Yes, yeah, so all thank we you. We establish new uh, structure. So we are a lot of uh, things to do and uh, we'll yeah. report you as far as uh, we will know some, uh, something, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, Dario, for this comprehensive picture. Uh, Adriana, would you like to say something? Adriana is a colleague of Dario. Is not a, is Sorry, not... I'm here. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, I um, uh, I had to find the the mute uh, unmute button. Um, okay. I'm uh, uh, very happy to uh, join uh, this uh, interesting meeting. Um, I only uh, wanted to introduce myself because uh, uh, it's my first time here. Uh, I'm a journalist interested in uh, these topics uh, and so for me uh, is a, a very uh, interesting uh, opportunity to be with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Adriana. And, and now we are coming to Latvia. Uh, Teresia from Rasa and um, Alisa. Alisa, yeah. yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. From Latvia, we enjoy 30 degrees heat and just about crisis, yes. Uh, the period of isolation and stay at home measures have led to the expansion of IT technologies, very rapid intervention in all spheres of our life. Our seniors also were to acquire modern IT technologies to be able to communicate with others at home with the help of video calls. Emergency measures also stimulated intergenerational understanding and cooperation. 62% of people working interactively at they home don't. consider this way preferable. 38 percent still prefer to work not at home but at the offices and we've um, made a survey of new skills of new skills which Latvian inhabitants have to acquire during the period of uh, the crisis so video conferences video calls usage have grown up to 19 percent concerts, show and performances, remote watch uh, by 18%. Sports at home 
by 17%, time planning 17%, expenses and income planning 16%. All in all, 66% uh, uh, of the population acquired new skills. So among seniors, uh, the possibility to watch concerts and performances in digital environment, social network, skills, shopping via internet. In middle age the generation, children learning at home, sporting at home, time planning. Younger generation have acquired meaningful entertainment in internet environment, sporting at home and time planning. So all in all, 75% acknowledged that obtained in the crisis skills will be used after the end of the crisis. So it's a short survey. So, and we have also uh, two uh, items which we would like to dwell now. First, we venture our government to stop paying uh, our mm -hmm. tax on pensions. So, and we would highly appreciate all your participants to comment on this issue if possible. Okay, so the second one is uh, we would appreciate uh, the help of Mr. Gisle from Iceland because we're now uh, just making uh, uh, our project for the Latvian Active Citizen Fund and the name of this project is Digital and Green Mobility, the key to democracy. So, and uh, we would uh, appreciate the help of the Iceland uh, participant, okay? So that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And I contacted Gisli to get in touch with you and you he be. responded that he, he will cooperate with you. So okay. it is good, you. That, yeah, good that Iraq can, uh, can support, you know, and promote the cooperation between and among our members. So on my list is now uh, Paul Butkus. Paul? Yeah, I can see you. Hello. It is here too. So, Paul, will you talk? Donna. Yes. Donna, I'm here. Uh, Rita. Yeah, do you hear Rita. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know that you are both, so I didn't know who who will speak first. No, I will speak. I, I, yeah, you will speak. Yeah, I can't see you, but it is good to hear you. <laughs> I'm Rita. under the Anel. Yeah. I'm <laughs> under yeah. Anel. Rita, Rita is representing Iraq uh, Association in Lisbon, yeah. yeah. And yeah. It's Oh. I'm under Anel. Do you see? Oh, Anel? I see. So that's yeah. why I didn't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. And I want to speak very, very short. Everybody told already the most important thing. I just want to tell about uh, what uh, uh, what Dirk asked. I think responsible behavior and thinking is very, very important. It's probably a fundament of everything. I think so. And I think we should, we should stress that. So in short, thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so it was Lithuania. And now we are in alphabet moving to Macedonia. Uh, Olga, uh, Professor uh, Olga, uh, where are you, Olga? Uh, are you with us? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so welcome. Very wise 
lesson from all participants till now we have. Now they repeat what was positive side of experience. But for me it was very difficult to arrive of some positive from the this front line of neg very negative. I am in a Doiran Lake now, touristic place, different than in Skopje. And we are with the simple, modest life now, in the garden, with the fruits, with the nightingales, and all this together is now. But the near here in this south east border with the Greeks is a cemetery of the first war and so many British soldiers there, thirteen hundred thousand, thirteen thousand there. When I look from the history in this small place. We have, from the ancient time, time, experience. I see Monique now. We have, in the Ottoman times, in Doiran Lake, the first line indigenous people fishing, rich of fish, rich of crabs, this lake was. But not now. Destroyed all this. In the middle line have been Jews, commerciant. And this is Via Ignatia Road. Okay. And third line in the hills have been Turks. All this community was in peace and good life. But the wars come after. First Balkan War, the second one dividing this uh, Macedonia on three parts. And uh, this is another kind of memory. For me, what is uh, to think and rethink? We are now with this structural racism, yes? With this. With this environmental destruction, yes, very transparent here in the Lake Doira. We are with this uh, global inequalities and very, very pregnant. A little group is rich, the other are surviving. Consumerism on high level. And COVID-19 is not separated of all this together. What this mean? The foundations of human survival are destroyed. And it's okay, we think of our aging uh, group people but I feel a little bit ageism where pretending that only aging people are suffering. Intergeneration cooperation, interracial and like this. Uh, we are concentrated on here and now, yes, but if we try to have a collective uh, memory or to build, how to tell, collective consciousness for the future, not to forget what was in the past and what is in this moment, just is necessary to build a new society, very different from this one, competitive capitalism. Uh, this factory, we have a factory now on the, near to the lake, factory of iron and steel production. Pollution, high pollution of the lake. 
which was possible to drink the water from the lake for some decade of years. Just try to have a much large um, change this global capitalism and like this to be changing. To mobilize us, yes, like this in local level, but the problem and this COVID-19 say that is global, global. And now I don't know how to change all this. Then if you propose it here, I am and now I will act. How to put uh, vegetables, fruits, uh, positive thinking in the media to exchange what was here and before in this Zoom conference. All this together, thanks to all of you that I am this individual member still now of the UROC and it's necessary to pay this membership, <laughs> individual membership, because you see how it was difficult to have another approach, yes? Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Olga. Olga is a professor of psychology, so we got, uh, we got a little bit uh, different angle from uh, the others we're talking about, and I think that it was very important to, for the comprehensive, uh, comprehensive picture. Thank you so much. Thank so you. now we are coming to Yap, Yap, the Netherlands. Dear friends, uh, it is uh, so nice uh, to see you all if, uh, via this, uh, this uh, Zoom meeting. And I think that's one of the uh, positive results of this bad uh, period. Um, and it is uh, more cheaper than the normal way we see each other. So um, uh, the second uh, remark, uh, I share uh, fast all conclusions and remarks until now and I'm sure the remarks behind me. Uh, um, a, summer, a little summary, what we uh, learned uh, the last month uh, is that there are other values than only economical values. And I think it is an important uh, uh, idea on the European level to think about this um, uh, uh, the changing of ideas about uh, values. For example, we have to think uh, uh, in products of care, cure, and welfare, and instead of the problems of material things, like every year a new uh, a television, or uh, every year a new car, or uh, and so on, and so on. But uh, there is also a risk uh, on this moment, a growing risk, uh, the risk of uh, age discrimination. Uh, two sides of it. Uh, the one side is what's happening in choices in the care and cure. Um, when there is, for example, a very ill uh, old uh, woman or old man of 80 years and a very ill uh, young man or young women um, uh, and all, and that that is it was a bigger problem in the the crisis of the uh, um, of the hospitals. Uh, what should they uh, choose? Um, uh, the 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 first place for the younger one, or the first place for uh, a person with a low perspective on medical medical issues. That's a big question, I think, for the, the next years. And uh, the second side, um, uh, what is in the, in the next months, years, until the vaccine is found out, uh, what's the freedom to act in the society from older persons uh, against uh, the, the younger people uh, I know the younger people has to drive and to uh, make the foundation for the economical situation, but it, it is also a question of freedom to act in the society. 
And yes, yes, there is a solidarity uh, from old to young, but the question is the upside down. So that's uh, are my uh, remarks uh, on this question and hope to hear a lot of remarks of you uh, after me, my uh, contribution. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. And uh, now I would like to give a floor to Aneta Zubekova from Slovakia. Yeah, yes, now it is okay. Yes, I'm here. Um, Thank you for the floor, Dana. <clears throat> uh, some, some points from Slovakia, if you allow me. Uh, first one, uh, what was positive for us to learn during COVID uh, crisis is solidarity. Uh, definitely solidarity as a, in the sense of intergenerational point when <clears throat> young person helps uh, old person in shopping, in advising, uh, a young um, young uh, artist uh, organize concerts in uh, home of seniors or near houses of flats. Uh, solidarity in in uh, strategic planning of seniors for youngers in in creating uh, some better conditions for them. For example. Some successful example is the free of charge training uh, through whole Slovak territory, also for both for both the seniors and students. Uh, second point, second point is the responsibility. Responsibility in the sense of seniors, where seniors were during the emergency situation very responsible and very significantly contribute to low number. Of, of deaths in uh, in Slovakia uh, uh, through the coronavirus, which is uh, comparable to surrounding countries, very very low, about 28 persons. Uh, and third point is caring on the seniors through policy. This is our recommendation, which could be uh, involved in the future in in some points, if you allow me. The first one is paying more attention on the older generation in, in uh, the field of social care, in the field of health care, in the field of some of their activities, cultural or sports one. Uh, other, point, uh, other point is, uh, is to, to put all the, all the positive experiences uh, from this situation, the policy to pay attention on the living standards of seniors of uh, appropriate pensions for living costs. For example, we have new government in the in the starting time of Corona crisis, and there was very very difficult to start the negotiation with them because they want to uh, to put out uh, all benefits. Uh, which are agreed with previous government, and it was a very, a very, very intensive uh, effort of uh, of seniors to to have a memorandum of understanding with them and to have some agreement to valorization of pensions due to thirteenth uh, pension, etc. And we very much appreciate Dirk Jarre's initiative to raising all these issues in EU structure and uh, and which will be put to, uh, all together in Iraq policy and we will uh, we uh, we will be very glad to participate in it thank you very much thank you aneta uh, now we are coming to slovenia josika puhar Jessica, the floor is yours. Yes, hello to everybody. Do you hear me? I'm heard or not? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I would like to say a, a couple of words about the, the work of our federation. You know, when I will give you some information about we are doing this, that is that the uh, that uh, the the work of my federation are you represented here. I would like to uh, to highlight or to 
underline a lot of things my colleague said before, because of this I will be short, short I, I hope. In Slovenia, we broaden intergenerational cooperation, solidarity and awareness, general awareness about all the persons. We are now much more present in, uh, in media and media are now uh, inventing the questions about all the population, you know. We spread the word, the word of our volunteers. We, are pre we have a very strong presence in local communities, in regions, in Slovenia, and also on the na uh, national level. We maintain social connections in different ways. We also increased the use of uh, electronic uh, way of communication. We made useful contacts with government, but we noticed some very bad uh, situation in the nursing homes, you know. This uh, pushed us to prepare two very uh, important initiatives. One initiative is to immediately increase the wages for carers in uh, nursing homes and also to change the criteria for staff because we don't have enough staff, the wages are low and also the payment of the, uh, of the medical care in nursing homes is much lower than in hospitals. The second initiative we are now providing to the government is to change the form of our nursing homes because in, this is in spite of the professional doctrine which, uh, which uh, wants to have all the people uh, under one roof, you know. We notice now that, that this is not appropriate for the epi epidemic situation. We must have different uh, homes, different forms of care for such a situation like it is now. And uh, perhaps for the future, for the second half of the year, we are looking how we will survive because of the economical repercussion of this epidemic situation. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Okay. And uh, now in alphabetic order, order comes Switzerland. Roland, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Well, uh, thank you to, uh, to give me the floor. And uh, I will say, first of all, we, I share a lot of your remarks and they are valid also in Switzerland. Uh, a few things, a uh, few of, of those remarks you've made. Uh, for Switzerland, the elderly cannot be placed in the same category. If you look, nobody will talk about young people. There are many different categories in those 31st years of your life. And why not in the same range of time, in the same years, 30 years, between 60 and 90, maybe in the next, next coming years will be 100. That means 40 years. And we put systematically, and I say, I think all over Europe, maybe all over the world, we put all the, say, the people in the, same, in the same pot. And that is not possible. In the, in the future, we have to change that. We, because there are so many people, well, I see you all 25. You are good health, you are uh, active and so on. I, I don't accept to be in the same range as people in a home of 90 years old, waiting for death. I'm sorry to say that, but it is like, it is like this. We don't have to forget also that we are, at, at least we, we all have to die one day. One day. And uh, I think during the corona, during the pandemic, we forgot a bit of this and especially the medicine. Uh, the second, second remark I will say is uh, about the, the uh, digitalization. The, the new uh, 
well, we are the first example of that. To to join together uh, with the with the with the technology, uh, I can make just a, a small example. I'm leading an association of 500 people, uh, nothing to do with senior or the old older people, but most of our members are over 50. Before the pandemic, we had 110 people, which are, have no email, no email, no access to. And now after three and a half or four months, we have only 42. That's an example. And uh, one of the remark I have to say, it's, and you, you said it also, is the intergenerational uh, inter, uh, solidarity. We don't, we have to work a lot. We, as older people, we have to, to make sure that we don't get, go to a gap between older and younger people. We need all together. We will be, older people, we will be always more and more, at least in Europe. Uh, in the years of 40, we will be around 30% of maybe more than 30% of the population. They have to, we have to have the, the, the connection within younger people because at least they are paying for us. They will have, and that will be a, 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 a phenomenal for our rents and a phenomenal problem, economic problem, if we don't uh, be in this intergenerational. Inter uh, it's in the same way when we think that senior people are working hard in the society. We are part of the society and we have to be recognized as a part of the society, not to be to say, well, you are 60 and you are out of the society. That's not true. We need all we need and especially with the volunteering, uh, which are, uh, are uh, doing the, the older people, and we have to be recognized in this sense. Well, you have all those remarks. The, one of the most important remarks we, sh we, we see is to promote the healthy life of older people. We need to be more healthy. We have to be to have a, a, a way of life which is better to have the immunity against corona virus or other virus. That was my contribution. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roland. Very good. Uh, it is what, yeah, what most of us probably think that uh, we are ready to play more active role in the society than we got the opportunity up to now. And it is our task to change it. So now I am coming to Elizabeth Sklatter from the United Kingdom and then uh, Galina comes and then we are going back to Peter Hansen who finally appeared on the screen. Hello everybody uh, and, and good morning. Um, oh. Many of, of uh, my remarks have already been covered in previous presentations. That's one of the good things about um, being almost at the end, that um, you're, you, you can see um, how things are echoed. I want to pick up slightly different um, aspect because I think one of the things that has been going around in the UK at the moment is a recognition of the informal economy and who it is that is supporting people to enable the younger generation to work. So it's a, an issue of intergenerational solidarity, which people have mentioned already this morning. And I think what we are beginning to see, though I, how much it will be recognized um, as we go forward is in the future, is that um, a huge amount of work is being done, as uh, Roland was saying about volunteers, by older people for their families, for their community, uh, and for society. Who does the child care? Who does the elder care, which enables workers to go to work? And unless this is recognized and is supported, not necessarily financially, but with um, 
suitable infrastructure. You, the finances may be in the infrastructure that, rather than in personal payments, but it must be recognized. And I think that's one of the points that, that we must make. The second thing is thinking about um, that much is being made in the UK in the media about will there still be jobs? What jobs will still be available for younger people, for, for the working population? And of course, we as older people are also working. We're in paid employment as well. So what jobs will be available? And um, the implications of that is if there are no jobs, and some of us have been, many of us are probably, I would say, very generally middle class. We've been in professional, we are professionals. We have got reasonable pensions. But for those who are not uh, in professional occupations, younger people, who, how are they going to contribute to their pensions? We're talking about poverty in later life. And I think that is an intergenerational um, support that we can push um, to our governments in the issues of ensuring, as Anika, Anika was saying, about pension reform and pension support. Because what we will see that if in the future those jobs are not available for people, they're not going to be contributing to their pensions. They're going to be living in poverty in later life. Another aspect is issues of um, relation stress in relationships during the COVID-19. And we're beginning to see both um, issues of um, elder abuse, but also within across the age groups, issues of divorce. And there is an expectation of increasing divorce. And one thing we know economically, that when couples are divorced and women stay single, they become poor. And uh, the issues, are, and, and we do know that from research, that older single women in Europe are amongst the poorest of older people. So. Those are, I think we need to think about how we can support um, our, our, our families and communities. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was about digitalization. And I've, uh, I, I'm in touch with a, a wonderful group um, called the um, Scottish Women's Convention, who are regularly funded by the Scottish Government to consult women across Scotland, women of all ages across Scotland. And they have um, done a, a, a recent, uh, in May, they uh, did a consultation in nine regions in Scotland, many of them rural areas. So picking up on what was said about those of you in, in, in rural areas, um, tremendous support <coughs> within the communities who have come together um, and, and supporting each other in all ages. The issue of digitalization is an issue because not all rural areas have broadband cover. And therefore, even on the islands in Scotland, you may have a hotspot of broadband in one part of the island, but for people on the other part of the island, no cover at all. So you cannot res you have to be careful as a government as to whether if you put your services online, that you are covering everybody. And that is not the case. And one of the issues that has been for those countries for whom, um, where, where there isn't 100% cover, um, they're still finding it very difficult to, to provide that cover. So we have to, although we push digitalization, we say how positive it is, and it is positive, we, there are connections. But as one person said in that review, online is not the new normal in Scotland and certainly not the new normal, because people want personal connections. They don't want to be just um, uh, isolated. The issue of isolation is not about, well, you can connect online. People do not want that. They want personal contact. So I think we have to be careful when we are, when, when we're pushing for future services, that we recognize that diversity of all the people. And I think that's probably all I want to say. So thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth, very much uh, for a very, uh, very useful and comprehensive contribution. And now I would like to give a floor to Galina Polyakova from Ukraine. Thank you very much. Uh, my best regards to everybody. I'm glad to see you and to hear you. Uh, almost everything has been 
phenomenon and uh, people got used to it perhaps uh, this is because not so many cases of death in ukraine luckily poo, poo, poo. Um, and uh, people are starving for communication for meeting people for talking to um, meet together uh, and i despite we have now the second wave of uh, covid cases in Ukraine, but people are, are more open and they want to communicate, they are tired of quarantine, and uh, perhaps we need to um, influence and to uh, ask them to be more careful, I mean our target group, older people. Uh, I am afraid it will be more difficult that, uh, than in the very beginning of the quarantine and of the epidemics. But we need to do it. Thank you. I wish you all to be healthy. Thank you, Galena. And now I would like to give the floor to Peter Hansen, who was missing in the beginning when it was his turn. Can you, Peter, turn it on? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Yeah, I, uh, I was delayed by some private activities. So um, my remarks are as follows. With the, <clears throat> the experience of three and a half months of this COVID-19, uh, we are now beginning to lift the restrictions and it is uh, obvious that we have learned quite a lot. First of all, that uh, old people in general are not uh, the, the people most at risk when it comes to this, this uh, pandemic. It is uh, other factors like uh, other diagnoses. So, we don't have to consider the old people as special fragile, but we have to consider being uh, careful. And we have been rather successful in, uh, in Denmark, uh, being careful. But no one knows what will happen in, in, in future. We uh, are now lifting up the uh, restrictions and we, uh, hope that uh, we will not have a second or third wave but it is now the focus is on the economic consequences and i want to stress the fact that uh, denmark now uh, gets the uh, advantages of uh, being a very uh, with a country with high taxes as i mentioned last time because we have substantial amounts to give to all people who have been suffering. And uh, I can give you the example that on top of all the, the pensions, every uh, pensioner, also every unemployed in this country will receive uh, a one-time amount of uh, 
1,000 Danish crowns, which equals to 130 euros, in order to uh, spend, to inspire people to spend more money. So there's a lot of focus on how to recover from this uh, very unusual situation we have been living under for the past three and a half months. I think it's very important now that all the countries in Europe are supporting each other and being very careful when we open up for the possibilities of traveling and so on, that uh, we try to lift in common because we see that countries that don't pay attention, they are now having a very bad situation. So I hope that we in common can uh, work together and uh, I uh, leave the floor to uh, others by now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. So uh, I would like to give a floor to Vandana Vyas, uh, the Indian uh, PhD student from Germany. Uh, Vandana, hello. So uh, the floor is yours because you are with us for the second time already. Thank you so much, Tana, and uh, thank you so much for inviting me in for this meeting again. And uh, I mean, this meeting is very helpful for me, especially the uh, the ideas and the different opinions which come up in this meeting. So, I mean, I don't have much to comment right now, but I, I'm looking forward for more meetings so that I can build up my knowledge on the issues and the problems and the challenges which we are facing today. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Dirk, I am going back to you and giving you uh, the, the guidance, uh, transferring it to you, uh, because now you will uh, start the discussion on, uh, on these uh, presentations. So, Dirk. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. You did very well by organizing the contributions and not forgetting anybody. I must say that um, listening to these uh, one and a half hours of contributions, um, I'm stunned by the variety of points which are raised and the, the way how the issues are presented by our members. It gives, um, I, I, I would have liked that many politicians responsible for managing uh, today's society could have listened to these testimonies from, from our members. They would have learned a lot and would have got some orientation for how to uh, plan for the future. These very rich um, uh, contributions, and I would like to thank Monique again, uh, she recorded all that so that um, the session is not ended by 12, but you can reload it on your computers, you can re-listen uh, to it, and you can make even your own notes, etc. cetera. Um, at the end of the last meeting, when we uh, discussed about the media and the influence of the media on what is the image of older persons in, in our society, we decided uh, to uh, come up with a press release. This press release, as I mentioned already at the beginning, was sent to all the members, encouraging them to add uh, an additional para of what is on their mind and what is important for them from their own point of view, and to channel this press conference to various media, be it uh, print media, be it uh, television, be it whatever you have. And uh, we got some reactions um, and these were very positive. We, as URAC, um, as the board of URAC, we also distributed it not only to the regional, local and national level, but to the international level. We send it uh, obviously to the age platform, we send it to the social platform, we send it to at least 20 international organizations, which were um, pretty grateful 
and said, well, your arguments are, are most valid. Now the question is, um, are you in agreement uh, generally to come up with a second press release um, which filters out some of these points which were raised today and where we feel that the media may, may wish to uh, publicize on the grounds of the argumentation a more positive uh, image of older persons. Um, the debate right now is on what do you think should be channeled to the media and if you want to contribute to that you can do it right now by talking just one minute not three minutes right now if we reduce that so that we have many contributions but you can also send a written sentence to Dana after this video conference, when it comes to your mind, just a very, very short sentence and, on, and only one, and say, this seems to be important to put it in, into the next uh, press release. Now, the floor is open for open discussion. What would you like to see in a communication to the media? Raise your hand and then talk. Dana, first place. So definitely I would like to have there uh, the, the active role of uh, senior citizens in the society uh, to, to give a proof of, that we are uh, thinking about the solidarity with uh, younger generations and that we are able to contribute to it. That uh, we are not someone who is already who lives through his her life and is put aside not to be too much in the way so to stress the you know our active role and i am uh, i am positive that we are able to play such a role but the, the media should help us and the, you you can't order that uh, the younger generations can't uh, show some ageism. You, you have to build the respect in the society with action of the elderly, of the seniors. They have to act in that way that they are actually somehow earning the respect from the younger generation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Nana. Uh, you will put that into one sentence. <laughs> okay, who else? I see Milos raising his hand. A few words, please. Uh, I would like to take your attention to the fact that uh, the first press release is hanging on our website on page Presidium. So you can check it and read it. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Please, others who would like to Josica, Josica. Uh, I can't see them all. Right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah help me, please. Josica. Thank you for the floor. I would like to add that sentence. We must start to make differences among the groups of older people. They are one of them are old. There are more old, and some of them are old and old. You know, but we must. We must uh, also uh, push the statistics to make the differences minus minus uh, in the groups of five years. Thank you. Thank you. We insisted already uh, on the fact that older persons are not just a homogeneous group that they are very, very, very different, perhaps even more different than the younger ones. I can uh, see Rosemary and then Yap. Rosemary. Oh, Rosemary first. Microphone. Microphone. Ros Rosemary, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. You have to turn it on. No? No. Yeah, now, now, no. now it is correct. I can you see me? Yes. Yes. That's fine. We can see you. We can hear you. Uh, my issue is uh, I make 
you rem um, I want to make you remind 2012 when we met at the minister conference in Vienna and there was the commission lady and she said uh, young persons are going up to 45 and middle ages are going to 75. Roland Grunder, you are just right, yes? And old age starts with seven, uh, 76. So that's the life and, and going on to 89, yeah? And then very old age starts with 90. And I think that's sensible, but it hasn't come around all the way around that everybody knows it. And do you know why? Because when the people middle ages to 74, that means in future, the people will work to 74. But uh, you can't sell this statement. And so you never heard it unless uh, it was 2012. Here, you will really agree that you heard it. Yeah, you agree. We heard it. We heard it. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And so we can make ourselves a, a new kind of system, uh, according to Gun, uh, Roland Gunda, what we expect from ourselves and in which state we want to be. So I am an old person, that's it. Uh, I'm going to be a very old person in six years. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, 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 both. Okay, thank you. Um, I think one of the problems uh, is that in the, the journalists of the media are also young people and are living in their own generation. So, um, and we, we cannot change that. So the, the only way to, uh, to change the, the image of older persons is to, uh, to, to, uh, to make relations as represents of the organizations of all the people uh, and we have to to look for uh, relations with the journalists and uh, other participants in the media that's the only way to can uh, to to change a little bit the the image that the older people are using the money of uh, the younger people and so on that's all thank you who else? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, Dario. Dario is applying. Dario. Just to say that Adriana is a professional journalist, very involved in the social matter. This is the reason by which I ask you to invite her, because uh, it's a, a good way to connect us uh, to the media. It's very, very active. And so we are looking for a bridge between uh, the association concerning uh, aging people and so on and the media through the journalists, but journalists specialize in social uh, methods. Yes. Okay, I see Peter Hansen. Mm -hmm. Peter? Peter? Yes, yes. Do you want to, to say right. something? Yeah, I just want to uh, oppose with uh, the idea that we are put in special categories just because of the age. In this country, we are discussing the fact that there's a great variety, a great diversity of people. Some people need a much earlier retirement age, for example. So I, I think that uh, we have to look upon every person as an individual and uh, it is not a question how old he or she is it's just a question what is his or her uh, capabilities thank you how true how true gabba gabba please thank you very much also first of all thanks for the first press release it was pretty good i think Dirk, uh, Dana and uh, Monique are responsible for that. So thank you for that. And it's also a very, very good policy to do these press uh, conference uh, releases. What I would like to suggest to the new one, is, uh, I think three points. One is, I think the remark what you 
mentioned there that politicians should uh, listen to, for example, to this uh, discussion, it would be very useful. So maybe, I just ask, maybe it would be worthwhile to send the press uh, uh, release to them, prime ministers or to the leaders of parties in Brussels. So they should read it. They should know about that at least. This is one point. The second, about the content of the press release, uh, what I mentioned in my uh, contribution in the first round, that uh, there is a real need uh, a more comprehensive European level social policy, which is a missing chain. We know about that. Uh, but uh, uh, this epidemic shows again that uh, the nation, national, nation states cannot solve epidemics on their own because the, the virus goes through boundaries and, and there are extreme tensions uh, among countries, actually, because care workers come from East Europe, they go to West Europe, but when there is an epidemic, they go home and, and people are left alone. But it's already the same in, in more and more, for example, in Hungary. They come from Ukraine, here is Galina, uh, or from Romania, nobody is here. But the, the, this international exchange of care workers, it's a real big problem. Um, and the third uh, about, uh, many of you were talking about who are the uh, the targets of of, uh, of, 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 of of policies, not the elderly people. Uh, they are uh, people who have some kind of, uh, of sickness and they can be young people too. Uh, of course, it's true that there are more people among elderly people, uh, but it's not because they are old, but because they have special sickness. So it's a misunderstanding of, about the whole issue. And uh, people are sort of angry about elderly people because they are going on the streets or, or, or they, they affect the society. We have the sickness and so on and so on. So I think the wording should be changed just like it's not a social distance, it's a stupid idea, it's a physical distance. Social must be closer, not, not a social distance. Physical distance should be. So, I mean, these are four points what I, I, I raised, maybe it's useful to use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabo. Um, these are very interesting elements which we keep in mind. Anybody else? That is not the case. Nobody would like to contribute right now. Uh, let me um, summarize something we can decide right now. And I, I got the feeling that this is a common wish that we uh, produce a second press release, which will not only be sent to, to the media, but which will be sent to decision makers also and attracting their um, attention to basic points which we have collected here. You have the possibility um, from now on, once we close this conference, that you send to Dana one sentence um, with the issue that you would like to suggest for inclusion into that second press release. Please do so and give it already a wording. We may change the wording according to the nature of the press release so that it is a coherent thing and not just uh, putting together very uh, disparate things. So we will find uh, a common language to it, to it and then we will distribute it. So please use that opportunity to, um, to make sure that you, you send such a sentence but no more than one point uh, to Dana, and we will have enough uh, material to, uh, to produce that second press release. I would also like to um, remind you again of the recording made by Monique. Uh, you can distribute that recording, which will 
you get the link in in a very short time. You can distribute that recording of the first and of the second video conference of URAC uh, to friends, to people, to even to politicians. Tell them here you can see what we have discussed, etc. We have decided uh, to respect your summertime, sweet, sweet summertime in your garden or in your house or whatever you do and not uh, call you for a third um, video conference before the end of summer. Well, and the end of summer is for us the end of August. Summer continues a little bit, but the active, the inactive summer where you enjoy the time um, that is certainly until uh, the end of August. And we will call you for and invite you for the third video conference, which will take place on the 10th of September. Please block that already in your diary. 10th of September, again, from 10 to 12. And let me see, uh, 10th of September is a Thursday. So Thursday, 10th of September from 10 to 12. We will see you all again and enjoy your faces, enjoy your contributions. And in the meantime, on behalf of the board of URAC, we would like to wish you very happy sunny weeks for the coming month. Stay healthy, stay connected in social, um, not distance, but avoid social distance and keep only the physical distance. Thank you very much indeed. It was great I to see you again and to hear you again. Yeah, Bye -bye. I, have, I have one more comment. Oh. I already sent you the date yesterday to those who applied in advance. So you got the, the September 10th already in the writing. And you will get uh, from us also this press release and you will get also the information about uh, the real physical URAC meeting uh, which will take place in the fall. Uh, when we have more information, we will uh, send it out. And I have one more proposal that I would like to discuss with you. I think that it would be extremely useful if we put these recordings on our website. You know, the recordings from these two uh, video conferences. What do you think? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do just yeah? Do. Yeah, it would cool. be good. It would be good that yeah. everyone can go to it, not yeah. only the members, and then they can see, you know, how active we are. I think that we have already impressed uh, the the Austrian uh, Association of uh, Seniors uh, because they listened to that and they were really, you know, impressed with uh, with the content. So I agree, uh, Dana, and uh, wish you all a very nice summer. I go to the next meeting. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, bye. Bye, -bye. bye to everyone. Bye -bye, Have a nice bye -bye. summer, but bye -bye. we will be bye -bye. in touch. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. bye, everybody. Bye.